Welcome to all the brothers and sisters in the world. I'm Brother RJ and I have Sister M beside me here. Shalom, brothers and sisters. So, brothers and sisters, we have arrived at uh, four, part 41 of the series uh, we are doing. And it's on the lifting up of the Saviour, the only begotten Son of the Most High to come. So, brothers and sisters, uh, in this video we will be uh, carrying on uh, in the book of Acts. We will be, uh, in actual fact, we'll be ending uh, with the, the last three chapters in the book of Acts in this video. But before we, we go there to, to start on that, Sister M has chosen to... Uh, to do Psalm 17, uh, we always do the prayer to start off with, and of course we do a pray prayer to end as well, but Psalm 17 is what Sister M has chose to start us with, so over to you Sister M with Psalm 17 please. Hear the right, O Father, attend unto my cry, give ear unto my prayer, that goeth not out of feigned lips. Let my sentence come forth from thy presence. Let thine eyes behold the things that are equal. Thou hast proved mine heart. Thou hast visited me in the night. Thou hast tried me and shall find nothing. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Concerning the works of men, by the word of thy lips, I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. Hold up my goings in thy paths, that my footsteps slip not. I have called upon thee, for thou wilt hear me, O Father. Incline thine ear unto me, and hear my speech. Show thy marvellous loving kindness. O thou that savest by thy right hand them which put their trust in thee, from those that rise up against them, keep me as the apple of the eye, hide me under the shadow of thy wing, from, from the wicked that oppress me, from my deadly enemies who can pass me about. They are enclosed in their own fat, with their mouth they speak proudly. They have now come past us in our steps. They have set their eyes bowing down to the earth. Like as a lion that is greedy of his prey, and as it were a young lion lurking in secret places. Arise, O Father, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword, from men which are thy hand, O Father, from men of the world, which have their portion in this life, and whose belly thou fillest with thy hid treasure, they are full of children, and leave the rest of their substance to their babes. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness, I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. So be it. So be it. So be it. So be it. And uh, that's a good. That's a good way to start, uh, for, uh, for this video, Sister M. That's a very good psalm. That and, brothers and sisters. The one thing about that psalm, eh, especially towards the end of it, illustrates, brothers and sisters, that eh, we shouldn't be eh, storing up treasures in this world, brothers and sisters. We we shouldn't be wanting to go after the things of this world. It's it's the world to come that we should be concentrating on, brothers and sisters. It's you know. As our, our Saviour says, seek the kingdom and his righteousness and everything shall be given unto you. So that's where everybody's concentration 
should be at and it's even more so especially so at the times brothers and sisters that we are in at the moment because we know what's going on in the world at the moment and basically you know people do not want to be getting involved with vaccines anything like that brothers and sisters because you know us that are for the father are for the word our messiah our shepherd king our concentration should be on them and not what you know what is going on in this world as in getting involved in things that uh, we 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 should not be getting involved in brothers and sisters and quite honestly we are at this stage that we are we are coming towards the the very end end times brothers and sisters so it really is all about getting ourselves right getting ourselves prepared brothers and sisters because uh, because it, we really do need to be a thousand percent doing this and of course we have been in the book of Acts for quite a wee while we have been doing uh, this book uh, for a few videos now and the good thing about the book of Acts brothers and sisters it's the Acts of the Apostles it's what it's what they did, it's what they went and did after the after the Saviour went up to be with the Father, rose up to be with the Father, uh, you know, to to be with the Father. Of course, the the disciples received the Spirit of Truth and brothers and sisters they which is basically the Saviour within having a uh, you know that spirit within that would lead them to all truth and of course not just that it was giving them everything that had been given by the messiah been taught to them by the messiah it was bringing everything to their remembrance that they've been taught it was words sayings you know brothers and sisters so actually it gave them all they needed to be going out and doing the work, being led by the Spirit, brothers and sisters, and be, and basically go out and do the Great Commission, do exactly what the Messiah wanted them to do, brothers and sisters, because it, the Messiah told them that quite clearly, I can't be with you all the time, I have to be with my Father, but he said to them, yeah, don't worry, I will give you this comforter, I will give you this so that I can be with you always, even to the, the very end. And of course, it was totally in spirit, brothers and sisters, within the disciples. You know, so the Messiah was absolutely with them, as he said. Even although he had to be up, go up to the Father, he was with them in spirit, brothers and sisters. And that actually is the deepness of what we need to understand they were being led completely into what they were to do and where they were to go and the amount of people that they brought in brothers and sisters you know so it's all very relevant to what we've been reading in the last wee while that yeah what they did is very very important um, and it's even more important for us today as well brothers and sisters because just as they did these works back then our messiah is telling us as we've already read in the book of john there is still good works there is still great works that need to be done today because people brothers and sisters need to be having the true path they need to be given the true path and what it is they have to do. And it's through the understanding of the truth, the gospel of the kingdom, that actually we absolutely know, brothers and sisters, what it is that we, we need to be doing, what we should be doing. Okay, so 
with that being said, we're going to, we finished at the end of chapter 25 in Acts, so in this video we're starting at chapter 26 and as always at the very beginning. Sister M, if you could carry on please. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. So, brothers and sisters, we see that Paul is in a very precarious, to put it in those terms, he's in a very precarious position, brothers and sisters. And he's in this wee section that we're going into here, um, Paul is going to be tried by King Agrippa. So this is this is what we're actually going to be seeing in this chapter, brothers and sisters. Okay, carry on, Sister M. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews, mm -hmm. especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. So, Paul is asking the, of King Agrippa that he's, he's patient with them and he hears them, hears them out, so he's being, he's being put on trial here, brothers and sisters, and he, he's he's going to to plead his case, you know, to to King Agrippa, and of course, he's going to plead his case because of the accusations that have come from certain Jews. Yeah, so he's going to be pleading his case, brothers and sisters to King Agrippa. Carry on, Sister M. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among mine own nation, at Jerusalem, know all the Jews, mm -hmm. which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of the Father unto our fathers, mm -hmm. unto which promise our twelve tribes, instantly serving the Father day and night, hope to come, for which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Mm -hmm. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that the Most High should raise the dead, Mm -hmm. I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of the Saviour of Nazareth. So, here's Paul telling you, brothers and sisters, if as, as if we don't already know, because we have read it already, um, that, you know, Paul was very much against the Saviour of Nazareth. He was very much against uh, the Messiah, he he did not agree with what the Messiah was saying. He was against them, and he was, he was as uh, it, you know it tells you here. He was um, he 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 lived in, as an you know in the sect of our religion. He lived as a Pharisee, brothers and sisters. So we see here that yes, he was one of those sects. We know, and we know actually. It wasn't just the Pharisees, that sect, it was completely against the Messiah, but we had the, the scribes and the Pharisees and all kinds of other groups that came against the Messiah. But we see here that he was very much so against them until we know that he was plucked out by the Messiah to go, you know, and preach the word, you know, to the Gentile nations. So we, we know, brothers and sisters, that... This is what his opening gambit is to King Agrippa. He's, he's telling him, uh, 
you know, he's explaining to him his situation. And, of course, the change that has come about Paul since he was plucked out by the Messiah to go and do the works, the you know, the Great Commission. Um, he's, he's telling telling him what has actually happened and, you know, the fact that he, he has changed. Yeah, carry on, or he's going to carry on that uh, tact, should we say. Yeah, carry on, Sister M. Which thing I also did in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and many of the saints did I shut up in prison. Yes, he put many people in prison, yeah, that were for the Messiah, that believed in the Messiah, followed the Messiah, brothers and sisters. He did that, yeah, absolutely. Carry on, Sister M. Having received authority from the chief priests, mm -hmm. and when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. Yes. And I punished them oft, often in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Now, brothers and sisters, what's, what's interesting about this is that, you know, the father, with what he's done here, you know, the Father through the Word and what he's done with Paul, brothers and sisters, you know, that, this story, this, exactly what happened with Paul is is extremely relevant for us all to understand that, you know, it does not matter where you've come from in this earth, it doesn't matter what you've done, it doesn't matter how much, and I say this completely honestly, it doesn't matter how much you are against the Messiah, or have been against the Messiah, or complete disbelief, brothers and sisters, when you see the story of Paul and see what he was like, and the fact that the Messiah plucked him out to be one, to do this great job that had to be done, going to the Gentile nations to give them a, the word, brothers and sisters, to give them the truth, that, that is telling you right there that anyone, anyone in any position, in any circumstance, no matter how much they have been against the Messiah, they can absolutely come into the fold. Because, you know, this man was horrible. It was really, really horrible to, to the people, to the people that were for the Messiah until he was plucked out, brothers and sisters. So that is what gives hope. To everybody, when you see the situation with Paul, it gives hope to everybody out there. So no matter what religion you followed, no matter how much you have been against the Messiah, for example, and not teaching it properly, really, you can still come back. You can still come back at any time, because actually... The Messiah's hands are stretched out, waiting for people to come back and receive the correct understanding and be wanting to follow him. So, actually, the Saviour's hands are stretched out all the time for anybody that wants to come back to the true understanding and to follow him, to get baptised through repentance to receive through repentance and and follow the Messiah. And you know, brothers and sisters, it's it you know, the Messiah absolutely wants to be coming to save. He doesn't want to be destroying people. He doesn't want to be destroying the woman's seed. He wants to be coming back for them to be for him and for him to save them, for our Messiah, to save them, brothers and sisters. And this is and this is what 
to, this is what it's all about. You know, it doesn't want to be destroying. That's, the, the, our, our Messiah didn't do what he did and shed his blood for us to take our sins on board so that when he comes back, you know, he's ending up destroying people. He wanted people to come back. He wants to gather us all together. You know, and that's that's exactly what the Messiah would be wanting. So we have to we have to do our bit and we have to actually, you know, get ourselves prepared absolutely, you know, and be wanting to do for the Messiah and therefore uh, be doing the will of the Father at the same time. And of course, our Father does want us to come back to His Son. He absolutely does in the in the proper way. Yet yeah, carry on, sister. And of course, it is the way as well as we as we say. Yet yeah, carry on, sister. M. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and comm and commission from the chief priests, mm -hmm. at midday, O King. I saw in the way a light from heaven, above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me, mm -hmm. and them which journeyed with me. And Gee. when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am the Saviour whom thou persecutest. I am the Saviour whom thou persecutest, Paul. So, this is him, brothers and sisters, he's going through, you know, his story, he's going through where he's, why he is the person he is today with King Agrippa. He's going through how it all started that he, he came about to actually be going out, you know, preaching and teaching the Messiah, brothers and sisters. It is really quite some story when we look at it. But, you know, it is absolutely true. And, you know, Paul was one of those ones that were against the Messiah. He was one of those that was the very, very, very luckiest one that actually the the word decided to choose. Our Messiah decided to choose. There's probably plenty of other ones he could have chose, brothers and sisters, but, you know, I really believe the Father was really wanting us to, sh to show us something quite clearly. And and within with Paul being the one that was plucked out because it was telling us, you know, it doesn't how much of a bad hombre that you are. It doesn't matter how much of a bad person you are and all the bad things that you could possibly have done. Anybody, anybody can come back. To the Father, through the Messiah, through repentance, brothers and sisters, anybody can come back. You know, and that that's also why, as well, brothers and sisters, that uh, we, we should not be engaging and judging anybody in this world. We are not the judges. It's the Father, through the Word, that is the judge, jury and executioner, you could say. They are the judges. None of us, none of us can judge anybody. None of us can, can judge anybody, brothers and sisters. So, you know, that's something also that uh, that we have done, obviously, when we've gone through the, the parables, the parables of, of the Saviour and therefore the Father. You get, brothers and sisters, that, you know, you can't, you can't be judging people You've got to be forgiving people, brothers and sisters. Anybody that's come against you, you have to forgive, brothers and sisters. And we definitely can't be judging anybody because it's not, it's not what the Messiah 
wants us uh, wants us to be doing. Yeah. Okay, carry on, sister M. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, mm -hmm. delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee, mm -hmm. to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto the Father, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Yes, and isn't it very interesting the way this is put, brothers and sisters, the way Paul actually puts this. You know, he says he's gone in the way of the Gentiles to open their eyes, to turn them from the darkness into light, which brothers and sisters is really having the saviour within having the saviour within brothers and sisters turning darkness into the light that light being the saviour the light of the world the word the saviour being the light of the world and from the power of satan unto the most high so turning them from that from satan unto the most high that they may receive forgiveness for sins and inheritance among them that are sanctified by faith. So, brothers and sisters, sanctified by faith. So, believing, believing in the Messiah, believing in his understanding, believing that when Paul was going round and giving people the truth, he was giving people the truth and he says that are sanctified by faith that is in me. Now, brothers and sisters, that sanctification of the faith that was in Paul, it's because he was in the Spirit. He had the Spirit of truth. He had the Saviour within. He was going round, brothers and sisters, and he was doing his work. Paul was the Saviour's disciple he was his and he was doing his work and it was because of the spirit working within him brothers and sisters that he could go round and he could sanctify people brothers and sisters he absolutely could because he had the spirit within and that that was why brothers and sisters that he could he had the authority of the Messiah. He had the authority of the Messiah and therefore the Father to be gone out doing the great works, the great commission and bringing people to the Messiah. Bringing people to him. And it was literally, he was bringing people to the Messiah. Obviously, Paul did a small degree of baptism brothers and sisters, because actually when a person has been baptised and they've been sanctified, they have received, brothers and sisters, they've, they've basically given forgiveness for their sins, they've believed in the Messiah, understanding that Paul brought, they could get baptised and they, they could be operating like him, in the spirit so Paul did a small degree of baptism but the ones that he was bringing in became exactly the same as him exactly the same position as he was and they could go out and do the works they could go and do the works and do the sanctification of faith through the spirit within you know, doing doing the work, doing the work from within brothers and sisters. And that that's why, that's why the Father, through 
our Messiah tells you, he tells you quite clearly, you can do nothing. You can do nothing without me. You need me. This is my works. Brothers and sisters, this is what the Messiah is telling us. It's his works. But what is he actually telling us, Sister Aim? I want to do my works through you. That's what he's actually telling you, brothers and sisters. I want to do my works through you by you being mine. You being my disciples. You, you are mine. So, if you are the saviours, you are his. And you are his servants to be, to be, to be used to do these good works, these great works that have to be done today, brothers and sisters. And that, that's the understanding that each and every one of us is to have so that it can be, basically, you can be doing the works in the Spirit, with the Spirit working within, that, so that it brings you to these great works because, brothers and sisters, a lot of people today that are leaders, ministers, priests, elders, what have you, they think they are doing the good works, the great works. But, brothers and sisters, you have to be in the Spirit. Because if you're not in the Spirit, then our Messiah is telling us, he's telling us quite clearly, you are doing dead works. That's not the works that I want you to do. They really then are classed as dead works. So you need to, you need to be in the spirit. Yeah, that's the message. The message is quite clear. This is, this is what we need to be. So, it's not to be accepting people, you know, church leaders, you know, like priests, ministers, all the rest of it, giving you what they would tell you is all you need. And that's what they're telling you. They're telling you that's all you need. What we are giving you is what you need. Well, it's actually, there is only one shepherd, brothers and sisters. Only one shepherd of the sheep. We're the sheep, and there's only one shepherd. And that shepherd is the Messiah. And it was no different back then as it should be today. The disciples, the apostles, Paul, the ones that they all brought in that were doing the work, brothers and sisters. Yes, they were going round and they were doing it, but it was via, this via, the spirit within. Spirit of truth, spirit within. That spirit that was sent by the Father in the Saviour's name. Brothers and sisters, that we are being told quite clearly who was actually doing the work, who was actually, because they were being led, brothers and sisters, by the Spirit. So, it, although they were going round and doing it, they were being led by the Spirit. So, this is why each and every single one of you out there needs to understand the spiritual understanding because... It's only through the understanding of this that you will want to do something about it and you'll not be wanting to be staying in organisations that, that are telling you that, you know, you should stay with us for your own good. No, brothers and sisters, we need to sort out our own salvation. It's important you sort out your own salvation. Don't let anybody else sort it out for you. You have to get right with the Father. You have to be wanting 
to understand this spiritual understanding so that you can, you can be baptised and you can receive and you can be led by the Spirit. Yeah, so this is, this is what we, we, everybody does need to see, brothers and sisters. It's very important that people do see this. Yeah, carry on, Sister M. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, mm -hmm. but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles, yes. that they should repent and turn to the Father and do works meet for repentance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah went to the Gentiles that they could repent and turn to the Father, come back to the Father and do the works meet for repentance. Yeah? And this this brothers and sisters is exactly what you have to see. You know, you need to have offerings for the Messiah. You need to be looking at having these offerings, having these works because, brothers and sisters, when the Messiah comes back, the one thing that the Messiah wants to judge you on are your works. He will judge you on your works. It's as simple as that, brothers and sisters. And if you don't have anything to offer him, well, you can see how that would be causing you a few problems. You know, if you don't have anything to offer the Messiah when he comes back, then then you you could well be in a lot of trouble. So this is really what um, what we're seeing here that is very important. It's not just a matter that people would tell you of today that you should just get baptised and then that's it, I've made it, you know, I'm I'm fine, I'm okay, I'm dandy, yeah, I just need to wait till the Messiah comes back and I'm going to be saved. Brothers and sisters, that is not, and I repeat not, what the scriptures are telling us. They are not telling us that. The apostles and what they did are not telling us that, brothers and sisters. And believe you me, that's why the spirit of error has run so deep in this world to think that, you know, the, the apostles have been going about doing all of this and they had to do all of that and that was their least service and that was what they were to do, to think that all of us today can just think that we get baptised and we can just sit back and do nothing, brothers and sisters. No, that is that is not what the Messiah has shown us. He's already shown us that, brothers and sisters, you know, if you don't take up your cross and follow him, then you're not worthy of him. And if you're not worthy of the Messiah, then you don't have the Father. So, you know, brothers and sisters, it's very, very important that you 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 have to buckle down and you have to sort out your own salvation. Yes, we want to all be coming together in the body, brothers and sisters. One mind, one body, one spirit, one baptism, brothers and sisters. Yes, we want to all be coming together in the one body, in the body of the Messiah. But first of all, you need to sort out your own salvation. You don't want to leave it to other people to sort it out for you. Yeah? The Messiah has told us quite clearly what we should do. You know, and it's it's not being 
going to a church building to sit in a pew to listen to, you know, sermons once a week. That's not what the Messiah is telling us he wants from his brothers and sisters, you know, and that, of course, is what the the way the devil has confounded everybody in this world to believe in religion, to believe actually that's all you should be doing. But of course we know the Messiah is telling us completely different, brothers and sisters. Okay, carry on, Sister M. For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of the Father, I continued unto this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none, none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. Yes, that he should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. Brothers and sisters, we are being shown here, you know, we are being shown here that actually the Saviour went up to be with the Father, but through the Spirit working within the disciples, the apostles, Paul, and all the ones that they brought in, it's telling you here to show light unto the people and unto the Gentiles. Brothers and sisters, that light, that light which comes within the Messiah, brothers and sisters, that light, that light that needs to shine within each and every single one of us, brothers and sisters. You know, so we're being told here quite clearly that, yes, he was the, he was ro risen up the first he was he he was risen up the first of the of the dead the first of the resurrection he was risen up to eternal life brothers and sisters and we show he showed us that we can all have that through and in him through and in him brothers and sisters we can absolutely be participating in that yeah carry on sister M. And as he thus spoke, and as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself, much learning doth make thee mad. Yes, and brothers and sisters, you know, I have to say that, yeah, I mean, you, you saw, you saw what, what was going on here, uh, you know, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. You know, all this learning you've been getting, it's made you a bit mad. You know, brothers and sisters, this understanding, this spiritual understanding, is very key, very key to all brothers and sisters. But there will be a lot of people out there that will actually think that it's wrong, it's crazy, it's not right. But brothers and sisters, it is right. And it is absolutely what everybody needs. But you know, back then, there was people that just did not believe in it. There was people that just could not accept this understanding groups that could not accept this understanding brothers and sisters and quite honestly I hope I hope and I pray that actually everybody will come to this understanding and you know brothers and sisters it's not that it's not impossible because nothing is impossible to our father nothing is impossible to the Messiah, our, our Shepherd King, so nothing is impossible within, with them. 
you know, brothers and sisters. Everything is possible with the Father and the Messiah, brothers and sisters. Yeah, carry on, Sister M. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, yes. but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. Speak forth the words of truth, of truth, brothers and sisters. And boy, everybody in this world needs the truth, the complete and utter truth, so that they can move on, you know, and be getting baptised into the truth, brothers and sisters. Yeah, carry on, Sister M. For the King knoweth of these things, before whom also I speak freely, for I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. <laughs> yeah, I mean, King Agrippa puts it this way, brothers and sisters, but, you know, King Agrippa was looking at it from the point of view that people that were for the Messiah or people that were in Christ or should I say for Christ, they were called Christians, brothers and sisters. So King Agrippa is actually saying it this way, um, you know, to Paul, that you almost persuadest me to be like one of those Christians, be like one of those. But of course we know that brothers and sisters that is not what the apostles were. That's not what they were. They weren't. They weren't termed as, or they're not. They weren't supposed to be termed as Christians. They were believers of the way. They were believers of the Messiah. Not that they were to be called Christians, brothers and sisters. So, this was King Agrippa that was really saying to Paul here, you know. Actually, all that you've said here, Paul, you've almost persuaded me that, you know, that this is the truth. You've almost persuaded me, brothers, eh, brothers and sisters. That's what King Agrippa is saying to him here. Yeah, carry on, Sister M. And Paul said, I would to the Most High that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day. Yes were both almost and altogether such as I am, except these bonds. Mm -hmm. And when he had thus spoken, the king rose up, and, and the governor, and Bernice, and they that sat with them. So, brothers and sisters, Paul is telling King Agrippa, look, I want you to be completely like me. I want everybody out there to be like me, to to have understanding, to believe in the Messiah, to be baptised into the Messiah, to put on the Messiah, to begin out and doing the works. He wanted, he wanted everybody to be that way. Paul, absolutely. And brothers and sisters, Paul is an example. He's an example to us completely of what we should be. He's a complete example to us of what we should be and and what we should be doing, brothers and sisters, and the way we should be feeling towards our fellow brothers and sisters out there. How we should absolutely be feeling towards them, that we want them to have the truth as well. We want them to be going on to baptism, to be to have the spirit within, to to be doing the will of the Father. You know, so, you know, Paul became that person. He wasn't that person before he was plucked out. But boy, oh boy, when you read these scriptures, you see Paul changed. He completely changed. When he was in the spirit, brothers and sisters, he was a changed man completely. And he was a complete believer, of course, as well, because he was operating in the Spirit. Yeah? Carry on, Sister M. And when they were gone aside, they talked, they talked between themselves, 
saying, This man doeth, doeth nothing worthy of death or of bonds. Of course he didn't. He, he hadn't done anything worthy of death at all. He hadn't done anything that was uh, worthy to be put to death. Nothing at all, brothers and sisters. And, uh, you know, King Agrippa was not going to be condemning him, brothers and sisters. Yeah, carry on, Sister M. Then said Agrippa unto Festus, This man might have been set at liberty if he had not appealed unto Caesar. Mm -hmm. Chapter 27. Yes, <laughs> yeah, indeed. Absolutely. Chapter 27, Sister M. And when it was determined that we shall sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus, of Augustus band, and entering into a ship of Adramatium, we launched, meaning to sail by the coasts of Asia, and Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, being with us. So we're seeing here in this chapter, now brothers and sisters, as we have left chapter 26, we're going into chapter 27, when Paul is being sent to Rome. Brothers and sisters, carry on, Sister M. And the next day we touched at Sidon, and Julius courteously entreated Paul, and gave him liberty to go into his fr unto his friends to refresh himself. Mm -hmm. And when we had launched from thence, we sailed under Cyprus, because the winds were contrary. And when we had sailed over the sea of Cilicia and Pamphylia, we came to Myra, a city of Lycia, and there the centurion found a ship of Alexandria sailing unto Italy, and he put us therein. Mm -hmm. And when we had sailed slowly many days, and scarce were come over against Synodus, the wind not suffering us, we sailed under Crete over against Salmon, Salmon, and hardly passing it came unto a place which is called the Fair Havens, nigh whereunto was the city of Lycia. Now when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous because of the fast what was now already past, Paul admonished them, mm -hmm. and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the la the lading and ship, but also of our lives. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which which were spoken by Paul. Mm. So Paul was saying that there could be trouble ahead, brothers and sisters. Carry on, sister. Em. And because the haven was not commodious to winter, in the more part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain, attain to fin Phoenice and there to winter, which is a haven of Crete, and lieth towards the south-west and north-west. Mm -hmm. And when the south wind blew softly, Supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosing thence, they sailed close by Crete. Mm -hmm. But not long after the, there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Ereclidon. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. And running under a certain island, which is called Clauda, we had much work to come by the boat, mm -hmm. which when they had taken up, they used helps and undergirding the ship. 
and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands, straight sail, and so were driven. Mm -hmm. And we, we were being exceedingly tossed with a tempest. The next day they lightened the ship, mm -hmm. and the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. Mm -hmm. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest laid lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. Yep. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me, mm -hmm. and not have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss. Mm -hmm. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of the Most High, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, the Most High hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Mm -hmm. So, Paul was telling them not to, to, to fear, brothers and sisters, you know, uh, not to fear um, what could possibly happen and there wasn't going to be any loss of life no man was going to lose their life at all and he, he could say that brothers and sisters with authority because of course uh, as it says in verse 23 for there stood by me this night the angel of the most high who I am and whom I serve you know so telling them not to fear and yes you you will be brought before caesar that is where you're heading that's what's going to happen and uh, you've not to you've not to fear and you know to tell everybody else that uh, they didn't need to fear either brothers and sisters yeah carry on sister M. Where, wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe the Most High, that it shall be even as it was told me. Exactly. Yep. Carry on, sister. M. How be it we must be cast upon a certain island? Yes. But when the fourteenth night was come, as we were driven up and down in Ad Adria, about midnight the shipmen deemed that they draw near to some country. Mm-hmm and sounded, and found it twenty fathoms. And when they had gone a little further, they sounded again, and found it fifteen fathoms. Then, fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern, and wished for, for the day. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when... They had let down the boat into the sea, un under colour, as though they would have cast anchors out of the foreship. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, Except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. Yep. Then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat and let her fall off. Mm -hmm. And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take meat, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that ye have tarried, and continued fasting, having taken nothing. Mm -hmm. Wherefore I pray you to take some meat, for this is for your health, for there shall not a hair fall from the head of any of you. Yeah. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to the Father in, pre in presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. So he was telling, you know, his, uh, you know, the people on the ship, brothers and sisters that were with him, you know, that, uh, you know, they don't need to worry. Uh, you know, no harm was going to, to come to them at all. They weren't 
you know, they were going to get, they were all going to get through this, brothers and sisters, and of course, he tells them that they, you know, they need to have some meat because they'd been fasting for a for a good period of time, so they they needed to, you know, they needed to take some some food, brothers and sisters, and uh, you know, the Paul gives thanks to the Father. Uh, you know, he took bread and gave thanks to the Father in the presence of them all, and he broke it and they began to eat. So, you know, he was telling them, "Be of good cheer." You know, I have been uh, given work to do by the Father through the Messiah, brothers and sisters. I am the servant of the Messiah, basically. You know, well, you can imagine this is, you know, what he's feeling inside, brothers and sisters. You know, I am this servant of the Father and, you know, I have the protection of the Father, so you are all going to be perfectly all right, you know, and that's what he's, he's telling them here, you know, be of good cheer. Carry on, Sister M. Then were they, all, were they all of good cheer, and they also took some meat, mm -hmm. and we were in, in all in the ship two hundred three score and sixteen souls. Mm -hmm. And when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and cast out the wheat into the, into the sea. And when it was day, they knew not the land, but they discovered a certain creek with a shore into the which they were, they were minded, if it were possible to thrust in the ship. Mm -hmm. And when they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves unto the sea, and loosed the rudder bands, and hoisted up the mainsail to the wind, and made towards shore. Yes. And falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground, and the four part, part stuck, stuck fast, and remained unmovable, but the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves. And the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose mm -hmm. and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. Yes. And the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship, and so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to the land. Yeah, so the ship became shipwrecked, brothers and sisters, but they they all they all managed to to survive that brothers and sisters. They all managed to get safely onto the land, which uh, Paul, you know, guaranteed to them that there wouldn't be any loss of life. They would all make it onto the land safe and sound. And of course, we are going into, brothers and sisters, this last chapter of the book of Acts. And we will see in this last chapter at in the book of Acts that uh, Paul was going to be arriving in Rome, brothers and sisters, arriving in Rome. Carry on, Sister M. And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita, and the, barbari the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire, and received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. Mm -hmm. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer whom... 
Though he hath escaped to sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire, and felt no harm. How be it, how be it they looked when he should have swollen, or fallen down dead, suddenly, but after they had looked a great while, and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds, and said that he was a god. In the same quarters were possessions of the chief, chief man of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days courteously. Yeah, so we see brothers and sisters here that what happened uh, <laughs> to Paul, you know, it's like you had a viper that, you know, went and, you know, had a bite at him, basically, you know. Uh, and it was a venomous beast as well. Uh, it was hanging on his hand, and of course, he he shook it off. But brothers and sisters, they they thought, yeah, yeah, you know, oh, this has happened because this man's a murderer, you know, and thinking all that sorts, brothers and sisters. But of course, when his hand should have swollen up, or of course, it was so venomous that, you know, it was, you know, poison would have been into his hand, brothers and sisters, so that actually, because of that, he wouldn't have had long to live. But, you know, Paul, being for the father, Paul, you know, being protected, and no harm was going to come to Paul, as I say, he shook this off, and, and uh, no harm came to him. And of course, they changed their mind about this man. You know, uh, of course, they, they did turn around and say they thought he was a god. Brothers and sisters, of course, yeah, because really, he he should have fallen out. He should have fallen down dead, brothers and sisters. So they were looking at him as, oh my goodness, he must be, he must be a god. You know, because he should be dead. Um, you know, and that's what that's the way they were looking at him. Of course, they did change their tune from what they originally thought of him, and this is what they, they said to him. Yeah, carry on, Sister M. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. Mm -hmm. So when this was done, others also which had diseases in the island came and were healed. So as we already know, brothers and sisters, through the other apostles, not just Paul, but through the other apostles, and of course, including Paul, you know, the miracles bent, went before the apostles, brothers and sisters. They were able to to heal people, you know, through the Spirit working within them. They were able to lay their hands on people and, of course, heal them from diseases. And for them to be, excuse me, for them to be totally healed, you know, and... This is what Paul was going to be given to do. He was going to get several people that were going to come to him to be to be healed, brothers and sisters. So, yet, yeah, as what the Messiah did when he was going round, you know, the miracles went before the the apostles, went before Paul, brothers and sisters, and yeah, the spirit within, you know, been able to lay hands on them and, and heal the people. Very deep, brothers and sisters, very deep indeed. Yeah, carry on, Sister M. Who also honoured us with many honours, and when we departed, they laded up they laded us with such things as were necessary. Mm -hmm. And after three months we departed in a ship of Alexandria, which had 
wintered in the isle, whose sign was Castor and Pollux, and landing at Syracuse, we tarried there three days, and from thence we fetched a compass, and came up, and came to Regium, and after one day the south wind blew, and we came the next day to Pitio, Putolia, where we found brethren, and were desired to tarry with them seven days, and so we went towards Rome. Mm -hmm. And from thence, when the brethren heard of us, they came to meet us as far as Apiforum, and the three taverns whom when Paul saw, he thanked the Most High and took courage. Mm -hmm. And when we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard, but Paul was suffered to dwell by himself with a soldier that kept him. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass that after three days, Paul called the chief of the Jews together, and when they were come together, he said unto them, Men and brethren, though I have committed nothing against the people or customs of our fathers, yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, yeah. mm -hmm. who when they had examined, examined me would have let me go because there was no cause of death in me. Mm -hmm. But when the Jews spake against it, I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar, not that I had ought to accuse my nation of. Mm -hmm. For this cause, therefore, have I called for you, to see you and to speak with you, because that for the hope of Israel I am bound with this chain. Mm -hmm. And they said unto him, we neither received letters out of Judea concerning thee, neither any of the brethren that came showed or spake any harm of thee. Mm -hmm. But we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest, for as concerning this sect, we know that everywhere it, it is spoken against. Mm -hmm. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him, into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of the Most High. So, brothers and sisters, yeah. So, there was, there was many people, brothers and sisters, that were against this sect, they were against, they were against this true teaching, they were against this, this true understanding that Paul was actually uh, bringing brothers and sisters. And of course, you know, he was telling, you know, them brothers and sisters that the Jews speak against what he was bringing and he was constrained to appeal unto Caesar. Not that he believed that he had done anything wrong because he hadn't done anything wrong, brothers and sisters, and he knew he hadn't done anything wrong, but he just wanted, <clears throat> he just wanted to, he wanted to clear his name, he wanted to show that actually he, he has not done anything wrong, but of course he knew that he hadn't, but he wanted to almost like prove that, look, I, I am, I am absolutely a sound man, I, I, know that I am not doing anything wrong. Um, but of course, there was a lot of people, as we saw from verse 22, there was a lot of people that were speaking out against this path. A lot of people were coming against it, as we know, brothers and sisters, as Paul was going around teaching and preaching, you know, he was, he was coming up against a whole lot of opposition from all sides, from all angles and all sides, brothers and sisters. Um, so, and, of course, he was teaching and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. He was testifying the kingdom of the Most High to come. 
he was preaching of the the gospel of the kingdom to come brothers and sisters um as he has been instructed to teach but of course as we see there was a lot of people that were against it yeah carry on sister M. persuading them concerning the saviour both out of the law of moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening mm -hmm. yeah and so it's interesting here that you know that there was a lot to what Paul was actually preaching, brothers and sisters, because he was he was preaching what the Messiah was preaching. He was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And of course, he was doing that, brothers and sisters, but he was he was persuading them to understand that. He was persuading them to understand what the Messiah actually brought. And he was show he was showing it both out of the law, what the what the Messiah brought, the gospel kingdom to come, the the fact that the Messiah hadn't done away with the law and the prophets. He came to fulfil the law. So he was he was giving them all that and he was taking it back to actually, yeah, as it says here, out of the law of the Moses and out of the prophets. But of course, he was telling them that, yeah, that was what happened with the Israelites back then. But, you know, when the Saviour came in the scene, it was a new thing that was going to be done. We were going to be following the new covenant, the law written in our hearts and our heads. Because the Messiah was the fulfilling of the law. And brothers and sisters, this is the way that everybody should be seeing this. When it tells us, when the Messiah was telling us quite clearly he was, he didn't do away with the law and prophets, he established it. He was the word that was made flesh and dwelt amongst with. He established the law with Moses to give to the children of Israel. So he wasn't doing away with what he established before he came in the flesh. So he wasn't doing away with it, brothers and sisters. He was the fulfilling of the law. That's what uh, our, our Messiah actually was. He, he was the fulfilling of the law. So it meant that we could have the Messiah within. We could we could have the law written in our hearts and our heads. That's what he brought through. That new covenant is exactly that. Having the law written in our hearts and our heads, having everything confirmed within through the spirit of truth. Through having that complete truth within and to be operating in the spirit and of course to be put out to works by the Father. If we are deemed worthy enough, then we would be doing the will of the Father. We would be put out to works by the Father. And that's exactly what everybody should be wanting to do. So Paul was showing us here, and he was doing it from morning till evening. <laughs> so if any of you out there are thinking, what do we need to do to be pleasing the Father? What do we need to be doing? That is exactly what we should be doing. We should be preaching the gospel, the gospel of the kingdom, the complete understanding. We should be giving it to people and we should be getting them to see it, accept it, understand it and have them baptised brothers and sisters, yeah, telling them about the kingdom to come, the kingdom that we can have to come with our Messiah, a thousand years with our Messiah, brothers and sisters, a thousand years. So that's why you don't want to be getting broiled in this world and what this world can offer you, it's the kingdom to come. That, that 
is the complete message, brothers and sisters, and it's to carry on living. Not to be dead and be in the lake of fire, brothers and sisters, it's to be carrying on living. Yeah, that's what everybody should be wanting. Okay, carry on, Sister M. And some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. Yes, and I'll tell you, brothers and sisters, there is going to be opposition for, for the ones that are going to be out doing the will of the Father in this time, doing these great works, having the Spirit within, there will be a lot of people will be coming against this truth. So, as Paul was finding back then, some believed and some didn't believe, brothers and sisters. But boy, do we want everybody to be believing, brothers and sisters. We want everybody to be believing. Yeah? Because that that is how you can endure to the end to be saved, brothers and sisters. Carry on, sister. Em. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed after that Paul had spoken one word. Well spake the Holy Spirit by Isaiah the prophets unto our fathers, saying, Go unto this people and say, Hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. Mm -hmm. For the heart of this people is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted and I should heal them. Yes, brothers and sisters. So, well speak through the Holy Spirit by Isaiah, the prophet, unto, you know, as Paul was saying, unto our fathers, unto our forefathers, saying, go unto this people and say, hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see and not perceive. Brothers and sisters, that is exactly what happened. That is exactly what happened. When when our, you know, Messiah came, when the Word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us, that is exactly what happened. For the heart of this people is wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing. And brothers and sisters, you see, that's why we have to understand today. We have to see what the Messiah brought, understand what the Messiah brought, and through the understanding, brothers and sisters, we will know what we have to do. Yeah? So it says, And his ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, least they should see with their eyes. So, brothers and sisters, you have to see with your eyes. You have to see and understand this understanding hear with their ears and understand with their heart, and they should be converted, and I should heal them. So, the Saviour is just waiting in the wings. He's waiting in the wings, brothers and sisters, to heal each and every one of us. He wants to heal each and every single one of us. He wants to convert every single one of us, and he wants to heal every single one of us, brothers and sisters. That is what our Messiah wants to do. He wants to come to you. And I know I've said it once, and I will say it again, that if we understand these words, if we understand these sayings, he tells us himself, I and my Father want to come and abode with the vessel. What's that, brothers and sisters? What does it mean to be aboding with the vessel? It means in the vessel. To be in, to abode, is to be in something. To abode, to be in the vessel. Yeah? So, that is actually what our Messiah is saying. 
you know. So if you understand my word, you can receive of me through baptism, and you can be one of those that is put out to work. So you could be doing the will of the Father, and you could be bringing forth fruit for me. You can be bringing forth fruit to me, to the Messiah. With me working within, you can be bringing forth those fruit, those good fruit, those those people to me, so that I can have all that I want to have, so that the Messiah can have all that he wants to have, brothers and sisters. Yeah, so this is this is what you really have to see what's going on here. Yeah, you know, and we want to be doing these great works, or each and every single one of you should be wanting to do these great works that have to be done today. Carry on, Sister M. Be it known, therefore, unto you that the salvation of the Most High is sent unto the Gentiles, and that they will hear it. Yes, because, brothers and sisters, you know, the the Saviour, our Messiah, when he came, told his disciples they were only to go in the way of the Israelites. They weren't to go in the way of the Gentile nations. They were to go in the way of the lost house of Israel. But brothers and sisters, rest assured that the Father, quite clearly, as we see through Paul here, the plan of the Father was that they were that he was to get sent to the Gentile nations, to all these nations, brothers and sisters, that they would hear the truth. And they would understand the truth. For the most part, that they would actually, for the most, they would actually understand the truth. And want to follow it. Yeah? Carry on, Sister M. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reasoning among themselves. Yes. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him yeah preaching the kingdom of the most high preaching the kingdom of the most high the gospel of the kingdom he was preaching the gospel of the kingdom what the messiah brought brothers and sisters what the messiah taught the disciples he was teaching them of the kingdom to come. He was giving them of the Messiah and teaching them the kingdom to come. Carry on, Sister M. And teaching those things which concern the Saviour, our Messiah, Christ, with all confidence, no man forbidding him. So, brothers and sisters, if Anybody out there comes with any other doctrine that is not this doctrine, which is the gospel of the kingdom, you should not be receiving them. You should not be receiving any teacher, preacher, elder, whatever, is not concentrating your mind on the Messiah. It's not concentrating your mind on the Messiah to the extent that actually you want the Messiah. You want his understanding. You want to understand the gospel of the kingdom because actually it's through that, it's through that, and through understanding his parables and understanding what he brought, that tells you what you need to do. 
not just what you need to do, it should tell you what you want to do, brothers and sisters. And that is being one of those that wants to do the will of the Father by doing the great work stuff to be done today. And it's, brothers and sisters, there could be no other work that you do really want to do at this juncture today than to do this. There should be no other work that you would be wanting to do other than this, brothers and sisters. This is the work that needs to get done. People out there need to be saved. If we are brothers and sisters that want to be used, if we are brothers and sisters that we want to be used to be these ambassadors for the Messiah, then we have to have that mindset. We have to have the mindset of, yes, we want to be saved ourselves, but we want to be saving other brothers and sisters out there that don't have it, that need it, brothers and sisters. Yeah? And Paul, Sister M, Sister M, Paul, does he not just typify actually exactly what all of us should be aspiring to be. He is the one that actually really, you know, shows us and should inspire us to be actually like a him, brothers and sisters, like him because of what he did, brothers and sisters. So, and it's not to take away from the rest of the apostles, the disciples, brothers and sisters. It's not to take anything away from them. But the story of Paul, especially as we carry on, brothers and sisters, because Paul, we have seen his acts, brothers and sisters, in the book of Acts. But of course, there is still a lot more to come of Paul. And uh, brothers and sisters, as we come to the end uh, of this video, which is uh, part um, 41, brothers and sisters, this brings us to the end of the, the book of Acts. And, but not the end of of brother Paul because brothers and sisters uh, we will we will be back with the continuing saga of brother Paul the continuing uh, works of brother Paul and of course that will be in uh, the epistle of Paul the apostle to the Romans because we know brothers and sisters he is in Rome, and uh, that's why the next book that we come to, brothers and sisters, is, of course, the book of Romans. So, we will be back with due course uh, going into that. But, before we uh, close out uh, this video, uh, brothers and sisters, we... We are going to we're going to close out this video by uh, doing our closing psalm, and the psalm that I've chosen for uh, for to close this video out is Psalm forty one. So, if you want brothers and sisters to to join in with this prayer. Put your hands out and we'll put this prayer up to the Father eh, together. Okay, so it's Psalm 41. Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Father will deliver him in time of trouble. 
The Father will preserve him and keep him alive, and he shall be blessed upon the earth, and thou wilt not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. The Father will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing, thou wilt make all his bed in his sickness. I said, Father, be merciful unto me, heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Mine enemies speak evil of me, when shall he die and his name perish? And if he come to me, he speaketh vanity, his heart gathereth iniquity to itself. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. All that hate me whisper together against me, against me do they devise my heart. An evil disease, say they, cleaveth fast unto him, and now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. Yea, mine own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his, he his heel against me. But thou, O Father, be merciful unto me, and raise me up, that I may requite them. By this I know that thou favourest me, because mine enemy doth not triumph over me. And as for me, thou upholdest me in mine integrity, and setteth me before thy face for ever. Blessed be the Most High Power of Israel, from everlasting and to everlasting, so be it and so be it. So be it, so be it. Brothers and sisters, that was uh, that's an extremely good psalm to uh, finish off with. Um, so that brings us to the end of uh, part forty-one, and as I said before, brings to the the end of the book of Acts. Uh, but of course, we will be back uh, in due course with uh, with the book of Romans. Um, so. Till then, brothers and sisters, stay safe, stay well, and please don't go anywhere near any vaccines. As I say, stay well, stay safe, and all that remains for me to say is bye for now, brothers and sisters. Bye for now, brothers and sisters.